Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen. Now, Pastor Faustin, the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, Jehovah El Gibor, the mighty God, Jehovah Mekadishken, Jehovah Eloheka, Jehovah Elion, Jehovah Hoseinu, Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah El Olam, Jehovah Rufe, Jehovah Yireh, Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu, Eloheinu, Shama, Jehovah Nisi, El Olam has spoken with me today. And in this conversation, the Lord has continued to escalate the signs and wonders of this hour. He has continued on a relentless pursuit to bring forth a very important message to the nations of the earth. That this is the hour that we have long awaited for preparing the hour at which we longed to be prepared. The nations for many, many years have waited, sometimes in anguish, sometimes in despair, sometimes wondering and looking at the deplorable state of the church and wondering whether there will be any hope, any breath of God to renew the life of church the life of the Christian believers in church. And so, in this conversation, he has continued today. On this day, as he spoke with me, he has continued to pursue relentlessly to pursue the wonders and the signs of this hour that should help the church prepare the visitations that are meant to clean up the church, to purge sin of the church, to establish the church as the house of God, the light of the world, the salt of the earth, to ensure that a glorious and a holy church is raised from the present worship experience you see in the body of Christ. So in this conversation this night, this past morning essentially, the Lord, he took me to the Rift Valley. And he took me to the Rift Valley. I could see this mountain on my left here ahead of me. And I could see the valley. And I could see up the escarpment the houses there. And at the Rift Valley, then he showed me a very tremendous uh, broiling of contestation and people fighting over pasture, looking for pasture, grass for their animals. And I saw two houses burned across like this on the other side. And then another one is burnt in front of me here. So there was a bit of commotion because of drought. However, when I was there, then the Lord Jehovah asked me in the dream to command the heavens to open, that rain may come, and that there may be pasture, grass for their livestock. I can see the village huts, mud huts, some iron sheep and all that. And that is exactly as I did. I did as I was commanded by Jehovah 
El Olam, the everlasting God. And when I did so, then the Lord, he took me to a place and then he brought me back to the Rift Valley. And this time when he brought me back to the Rift Valley, again, after the decree, he took me and then he brought me back. This time when he brought me back to the Rift Valley, immediately the servant of the Lord appeared. And I can see that mountain that's raising itself there, quite tall. And I see a tall building also next to it there and other houses, settlements, habitations on the other side, right in front of me, but slightly to the left as I face that area, that field. When I just arrived at that spot in that valley, then the thickest dark cloud of Jehovah El Gibor himself, the mighty God of heaven, the tremendous thick total dark, totally dark, very thick dark cloud of Jehovah Elohim, the eternal creator, came from heaven and came and overshadowed his servant. It was an amazing sight and visitation to behold in one's eyes. The thick dark cloud came down very close and overshadowed his servant. And there are other things inside that cloud that I cannot share here. As I did not share in the Nakuru meeting. However, the thick dark cloud comes all the way from heaven and comes very close over the head of his servant. A huge cloud, huge, very huge. A big cloud the size of a city. And as that cloud comes down over the head of his servant, There are things in there I cannot share here today. Then all of a sudden, the heavens open, and the Lord now allows me to see almost uh, one mile away from the earth, up there, right in front of me. And I'm able to see how the Lord opened the floodgate of heaven. It's amazing. This is my first time ever since the Lord sent me. This is now my first time to see the Lord now, to see the Lord released from the storehouse of the rain. This time he made me see the storehouse of the rain, where the rain that feeds the earth is stored. This is amazing, amazing, amazing. I'm very astounded and very astonished at what the Lord showed me today. One mile away, I can now see the storehouse where all the water that feeds the earth, that water the earth is stored. And then he releases, he opens the floodgate. It's amazing. The water flows like a dam, a flood, which means a huge mass of water flowing like on a pavement, a huge mass of water flowing like on a pavement, when he opened the floodgate. So, 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 so the water flowed, a huge volume of water, as though flowing on a pavement, and when it reached exactly where I was, above, it was as though that pavement ends there. So you could see the water now beginning to pour down from that point on. Again, he shows me the storehouse for the first time. This is really, really my first time to see inside the storehouse of rain, where the Lord keeps rain that waters all the earth ever since the creation of the earth. And it's a huge store of water. And then he opens that store, but there is a pavement that is horizontal, it's flat. So the water flows, a huge body of water flows horizontal, and then reaching where I was standing at the Rift Valley, is where, in that dream, that pavement ended. 
So the water from that point on began to pour now down. It flows vertical as a huge volume on that pavement, what looked like a pavement, and reaching there, the end of the pavement, then it begins to flow like, like, like a falls now down here. And heavy drops of rain begin to pour down. Tremendous, historic, astounding, shocking, and very stunning and puzzling. And so heavy rain began to fall right on me there, falling on the Rift Valley there. And then the grass began to grow tremendous, very beautiful belovedness of the Lord. Again, today I have seen the storehouse where Jehovah El Olam, the everlasting God, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd, Jehovah Elohim, the eternal creator, Jehovah El Gibor, the mighty God of heaven and earth. I have seen the storehouse where he stores water that waters the entire earth across the many, many years since the earth was created. What a shocking moment to live to see in the prophetic calendar and history of the church. And the Lord opened the floodgates of that storehouse, and the water comes out, and it runs up there, almost one mile away from the earth, but it's running horizontal, horizontal, as though it's running on a pavement. It's not pouring down, it's running horizontal. But reaching exactly where I was standing at the Rift Valley, then the pavement now ended, and the water began to pour out now, down unto the earth. Now I have known how the Lord waters the earth, how the Lord brings the rain. Finally, he has shown the prophet of the rain, how he brings the rain onto the earth. And so right in front of me, the mountain is right ahead, slightly on my left, in the Rift Valley. Then water now pours, huge drops begin to pour, raining down there. Very shocking and beautiful sight. And then it is so spectacular that I try to record. In this dream, I try to record with my cell phone. I try to record it. I record it now from the top there where the, the horizontal flow ends and the vertical begins to pour. I try to record this very shocking phenomenon. And then it ends. And then slightly ahead of me now, Again, from there, it begins to pour facing on the left-hand side. But this time, it also has like a false. Part of it pours like a false, shoots a little bit ahead in a huge bulk out with mist while the heavy drops are pouring. And again, I, in the dream, I record these things by, with my cell phone, I record. I'm in shock. It so happens so fast. I record these things in the dream. So the Lord is coming to open heaven over this land again and again and again. And when I look at this site of the meeting, I see this mountain ahead of me, and I see the habitation and the settlements around the escarpment coming all the way. And then I see this very tall building ahead of me. This location is exactly the Menengai field. The same field in Nakuru, where the cloud of the Lord visited, where the Lord opened heaven, the mighty visitation that took place 2016, August 27th and 28th. So the Lord is saying there is a big mega visitation again coming to the land, where God the Father himself will now come openly and visit his servant openly in the eyes of all people, in the thick, 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 very, very extremely dark cloud. And there is so much inside the cloud, I am not allowed to share with the nation. But he's coming to visit there and open heaven there again. So if there's any meeting to be done this year, 2017, that meeting must take place at Menegai Grounds, Nakuru. That is the location 
the site of visitation where the Lord has now asked me to assemble the nation, to assemble the congregation of the Lord, because right in front of that mountain, there is going to be a mega visitation of God the Father himself. God the Father himself. We don't even know what will happen there. Other things not revealed. The Lord has now summoned the nations again to gather right in front of this mountain, to gather in front of the Menengai creator, creator, creator in Nakuru, Menengai creator, that mountain in Nakuru, because he says he shall come there and speak with his servant openly there. What a mighty time we are living to see. There is going to be massive rain, and that rain happens in two forms. In two very short, the first one right in front of me as I face the Menengai, and the second one on the right hand side facing the f- facing towards Menengai, but from the right facing left now. And real quick, and many people record on their cell phone, what a mighty, mighty, mighty time we live to see. I've always thought that the next healing service, see, the next revival meeting, because of the missions abroad that begin. The next revival meeting is going to take place in December, only in December, because we have many other nations, Australia, we have Italy, we have Finland, we have Namibia, we have South Korea, we have many nations that have to be visited to. But now the Lord has summoned the nation. He has asked me to tell all the congregation of the Lord, to tell them to assemble at that place, at that appointed time, and he will come down and visit his servant there, speak to the people there, speak to his servant there and his church, and bring forth a huge visitation there, and open the heavens and rain will fall there. What a beautiful time to live, to see. I love the Lord. I love Jesus. I love the Holy Spirit, my one and only friend. I do not have any other friend ever since the Lord called me at the throne room. He told me, from today on, I have no other friend and only the Holy Spirit. He is my witness. I love him so much. I love God the Father, my friend. This is a beautiful time in the history of the church. There's going to be a tremendous historic visitation at Melengai, Nakuru again. The Messiah is coming. Let the nations prepare. Let everybody prepare. We are headed to Mombasa now for a major, major, mega, mega, mega conference. Mega, mega conference of the big one, the biggest. After that, we head to Italy and then Namibia, Finland, many other nations. The Messiah is coming. Let us continue preparing a righteous church, a holy church, a glorious church, a church without wrinkle a church without stain, a church that is mature, because at this time there is a massive visitation of the Lord consuming the nations of the earth. What an awesome generation to be. What a beautiful time to be a Christian, to be born again. What a treasured moment in the house of the Lord. The Lord is coming to visit his church himself. The Lord himself is coming to visit his church. What a beautiful time to live to see in the history of this earth. These are the signs that tell us that the Messiah is coming. The Messiah, the King of glory, is coming. This is the one, this is he about whom it was written. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. May those who have ears listen to that scripture of Malachi and prepare for the glorious coming of the Messiah. Big things are happening on the earth. The season has changed in Kenya. It's raining at this time when they said it would be drought. Now the Messiah is preparing the church. The Father himself is visiting the house. Shalom.
Thank you.